Uh, before I start the tutorial, I'd like to give a shout out to E.T. Stevens for giving a super thanks. I really do appreciate that. And uh, yeah, that's uh, much thanks to you. Uh, now let's jump into the video. Hello, this is Ho from Trifle Production with another Blender quick tip. And in this quick tip, I'm going to show you how you can use an uh, add-on that helps you set up a lighting system in Blender fairly easily. It's called the Pro Lighting Add-on, or Pro Light Studio Add-on, actually. Uh, it's a add-on you have to pay for, but it's a good price for it. I'll leave a link for you guys to download in the description below this video, so you can try it out for yourselves. And I'm using Blender 2.8 for this version of the add-on. It can be used for Blender 2.8 series or 2.9 series. They have a new one. Uh, which they put out a while ago for it's about uh, the 1.31 version of the add-on that works in 3.1 and above but i'm using 1.3 uh, version of the add-on which works in 2.8 series and 2.9 series and the installation is exactly the same as the uh, 2.7 version of the add-on but i'll show you how you can install it into blender i'm using blender 2.18 and once you've downloaded it um, onto your system i'm going to click on that Let's go back. You'll see it looks somewhat, uh, where is it? Uh, like this. And you left click on that, and you go to extract files, and it'll extract it. Uh, and then you click on that file that has been extracted. And this is if you have this issue when you download it yourselves, when you've purchased it, it could look this way. Uh, and I'll tell you why this folder looks the way it does. But once you've extracted it, left click on ProLighting, the, the add on itself, left click on that, then right click. Then from the pop up menu, navigate down to Send To, and then go to Compressive Folder, left click on that. And because this is such a small add on, it's put in a zip file fairly quickly, which is good. And then I'm going to go to, let me click on the address bar here left click in there, then right click from the pop-up menu, click on copy, go back into Blender, go to edit and preferences, install, I'm going to left click in this address box, control via my keyboard, enter, and then click on Pro Lighting Studio, the zip, install add-on, and here it is. And you activate it by, you know, usually putting a check in the box is what we're going to do but there's still more to it because from the drop down arrow, arrow you'll see it says missing assets install below install assets dot zip which is not how the previous version was it was all inside of the folder I don't know why this is separate but that's just how it is I guess for the newer versions but if you I'm just doing this if you're facing this problem when you uh, install it on, into Blender and then you're going to go back to that folder where you did your extraction now I've already put the library in the zip folder and the text is in the zip folder. These two are going to take a little bit longer to down to put it in the zip folder, but it's the same process. Right click. I don't know how you would do it on Mac. This is a Windows uh, uh, machine. On Mac, I, I don't know how to do it, but on Windows this is how you put a folder into a zip folder. Right click on the folder, go down to send to, and then compress and it puts it into compressed folders. And then to install them into the add-on in Blender, click, click on install assets.zip. We're going to go back to our folder again. And we're going to click on uh, the library one first. Left click on that. Install asset zip folder. This uh, notice comes up. That says Blender may install while installing assets. This is normal, which is fine. Let's left click on OK. And this might take some time to install it. But let's see what the progress bar looks like. Okay, still installing it. Okay, that was pretty fast also. We just have to install the second folder that, that also contains um, the textures. So click on install assets again. And the folder is still in Blender's memory, that's why it comes right up. Click on textures, install assets again, click OK. 
this might take a little bit longer because this is a little bit bigger than our other folders were. Left click on that. If it takes longer than than I think, I'll just let me just pause the video and come back when it's fully uploaded, installed. We'll come back to the video. So see you guys in the end of it. Okay, and we're back and the files have been installed into Blender. Like I said before, this is a bit a bit of a different way to install this add-on because in 2.79, the library folder and the textures folder were already inside of the add-on, but for some reason with the newer versions of the add-on, they're separate from it, which I don't understand, but I guess it is what it is. But once those have been installed, you'll see it has this notice that says add-on install correctly with a smiley face, which is good. Go to the world tab to use it. Now I'm going to open up um, a scene I created for uh, this tutorial. It's got the cube, it's got Suzanne, and it's got a sphere. I'm going to go to the world settings. Your add-on should be here in the world settings. So let's left click on that and you scroll down. And it only works in cycles, not in EV. So I'm going to click on enable cycles. And here is the add-on. It's pretty straightforward. And to enable it, you click on enable, go to check in this box, and that enables it. And if you have things in your scene that the add-on feels as it as as though it's not necessary to be in your scene, it's going to give you this little warning box here. Left click on that and it'll give you what the warnings are, which is make background black, which means our background isn't black. And the reason why we're having these options is that we, we want to use the default settings of the add-on, which is to use the light setup as a display for as to help us display our models. If you were using uh, the add-on to help you in your scene, like lighting characters in your scene of an animation or a movie, basically the stuff you would just ignore and it would still work fine. But for this purpose, for right now, we just wanted to help us showcase our models in Blender. By lighting our models. So we're going to click on do all suggestions, <clears throat> which, which will cause it to eliminate the light in Blender and also make our background dark. That way when we look through it through our camera, our model will be highlighted by the light setup. And it has all kinds of setups in it. It has character setups, object setups, vehicle setups. Those are the three main ones which are great. If you click on this icon, this thumbnail, it has a lot of presets for you to use. Now the top ones are for the characters. We're going to have to scroll up. It takes some time because there's a lot of setups in here, but a lot of presets. But it's got all kinds of presets in it for all kinds of moves. It's got Joe M and Gavin H. The names are kind of comical, but they don't really signify what some of them don't really signify what the add-on, the, as the lighting aspect of it does, but you got Moonlight Glow, Shadow Play, Bounce Lighting, so on and so forth. Dan W has nothing to do with <laughs> the light setup, but that's just funny stuff. Anthony M, so on and so forth. So if you click on one of them, it's going to light up your scene according to what you see in the thumbnail. Now, for us, in order for us to see what it's doing here, let's go into Cycles in our viewport. Let's click on that icon there. You can see it just lights up. Uh, gives us that light, that uh, spotlight on the face of our model, which is cool. And you can just toggle through. I'm going to be going back and forth between this, the uh, viewports so we don't cause the uh, lag in Blender. You can choose whatever light setup you want. Now, if you don't want to go through all of the light setups just in general, just click on the category. Just go to this uh, parameter here, left click in there. And let's go to vehicle setups and it'll only show you the ones for the vehicle. Let's click on city lights. Let's left click on that. And it has this whole array of this whole setup of these little uh, illuminated balls and uh, bars. So if we go into cycles again, don't crash. And it lights it up according to what's in the thumbnail, which is cool. Now, if it so happens that you want it to just, uh, let's go to a simpler setup here so it doesn't really lag Blender so much. Let's go back to character setup and let's stick with him. Now, if you want to just shift uh, the focus of light between these three objects, left click on the object you want the light to focus on and click on set subject. 
and this box is a physical representation of where the light's going to point. So if we go to, just lost our scene there. If we go to our different one, you'll see that the light is focused mainly on Suzanne because that's where our subject is. If you want the lights to be on all of them at the same time evenly, left click, hold down shift on your keyboard, left click, left click, set subject. And now because the we've selected all of these elements in our scene, now all of them will get an even uh, source of light on all of the models. Left click on that and it all looks even. Now you can also scroll down to change the energy of it because if it's too bright, you can make it less bright by uh, changing the parameters here. You can change the temperature of it, the saturation of the light, the rotation of it. You have advanced settings, which is also pretty cool. Left click on that, have this drop down menu. Uh, you can actually change all these parameters here. And that's why I say it's highly customized. We can even add lights yourself to it and it doesn't affect the add-on at all. The only thing that affects the add-on is if you make it real. When you click on make real, it actually uh, causes the light setup to just stay permanently with whichever one you've chosen. So if you click on make real, you see it, all this is grayed out now, which means that you can't make any changes to the light setup that, that is on at this point in time. But in order to go back to your choices again, just press Control Z on your keyboard, and now you have all these options ready to use again. And you can set up a floor system, a background also. I'm going to get rid of this cube and get rid of the sphere. Press delete. Click back on Suzanne, go back to lights and set subject. The reason why I'm doing that is because I want you guys to see what it does in cycles in real time. So if you click on background, and let's go to the different shading viewport. Once again, you have to activate it by clicking on enable. Now it's added a background to uh, Suzanne so you can see things behind her. And once again, let's go back to a different shading in the viewport so we don't slow down Blender. You have different options here. They're not as many as the other setup, but you have different options for the background. You can make it whatever options you have. It's got uh, all these presets so you can choose from that gives you automatic uh, uh, background uh, visuals. Sunray gives you that setup with a texture applied to it. You can apply textures to it. So I said it's highly customizable. It's got all these different textures to it, which is cool. You can apply uh, flying embers to it. Let's see how that looks in cycles. I mean, look at that. That looks really, it looks really nice. It looks really, really nice. And you can also apply a floor to it. Once again, enable that and it gives you a floor. Once again, you have a uh, different setup presets for the floor and have a square. You can have a backdrop with it. You can have a pedestal. And you can uh, choose to cause the edges of your backgrounds to fade into uh, the floor to fade into the background if you want by having this option selected. You can change the texture of the background by clicking on image overlay. You can do all these options too for different having different textures on the floor, which is also quite nice. And if we go back to circle, you'll see that here it's got this hard edge which you don't which you might not want to have in your final render. And you, that's when you would have to click on fade edges to get a different faded background. If you go to the uh, different viewport, you can see that now that floor has been faded into the uh, background of the uh, of your of your uh, model. There, if you turn that off, you can see that's hard now. It's, it's a sharp edge. Activate it again; it fades it into the background, which is great. And the last thing I want to show you guys is reflection. And remember, with all these different options up here, you have advanced settings that you can choose and change. But I usually just leave it. I really don't mess with the advanced options. I just usually, usually leave it the way it is. Sorry about that. I'm just really tired, so I'm just pushing through. Let's click on Enable, and you can have all these options for them when it comes to the reflections also. Come on, let's stay up there. Okay, we have like skies and city reflections, uh, vegetation. You have kitchens and 
we have these really cool reflections back here. Let's click on let's click on this one and change our viewport again. Uh, reflection settings in the floor. You can turn off the reflections in the floor also by going to the floor. And uh, let me see. You can change the floor color. I think there there should have been a, re a reflection setting in here somewhere. But I guess that's in the older version. Oh, there's reflectivity. You can turn this down if you want to have it more of a matte kind of. You can turn it all the way up if you want to have it really reflective. But yeah, this is one cool setup inside of Blender for coming up with really nice uh, lighting setups for your models. If you want to model, uh, showcase your models in Blender, this is a really great add-on to have. If you want to have help in terms of um, lighting your scenes, in terms of animations, you can do this also, same thing. So yeah. This is a pretty cool add-on in Blender, and I hope uh, this tutorial was helpful for those of you who are watching. And I want to thank you guys who have subscribed in the past, those of you who are subscribing now, those of you who are subscribing in the future. And I will see you guys on the next one. All right, adios.